The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Sean from the YouTube channel Raising Awesome. My boy, he burned through all his lawnmower money on an Oculus Rift, but it gave me a great idea. Let's run it by him over lunch. Hey Connor, I have an idea for a new project. Oh, hey Walnut. Let's make a video game that instead of you going into the game world, the game world comes out to our world. So it'd be like 40? Yeah, we'd make a 40 game engine. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, there's a hot dog. Where? Oh, you mean lunch. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The real reason for this project is so we can have Eagle Design Blocks. Yeah, Eagle Design Blocks allow you to take multiple schematics of different sections of a circuit board or motherboard and bring them together. To date, we've been wiring together components like microcontrollers, power regulators, and also motor drivers pre-bought, prefabricated prototyping units. What we want to now move on to is making our own motherboards from these design blocks in Eagle. We also want to make a library of IoT code for all sorts of devices. Yeah, so we want to get a PC where it can talk to a microcontroller, and we want microcontrollers and PCs to be able to talk to other microcontrollers and PCs through web sockets, through the internet, through the World Wide Web, or on a local area network. So in this video, if you go to our blog, you'll be able to see all this code and all those design blocks that we create that pretty much when you're done, you'll be able to make any project that uh, you pretty much think of these days. So how about you start with the 3D game and then I'll talk about how we're gonna turn the 3D game into a 4D game. Okay. So the premise of our game is that there's a sleepwalking son that's walking throughout the house and scaring the parents to death. So that means throughout the house, there's a bunch of cameras like these. They can also control the lights around the house with their MIMO switches, like these. They'll control the lights and cameras by using security camera software on their laptops from their bedroom. The goal is the parents have to lead the kid back to his room by using lights found along the way. But they can't let him get into the light. Or he may awake. Okay, let's take a look at this how we're going to pull it off with the hardware. Just like Connor said, the 3D game will be the emulator for a security cam console. Whatever you do in that emulator will affect what happens in the real world. So let's take a look here at the 4D game engine. So first, we got the PC game, which we'll make here in just a moment. We'll upload it to Steam. The PC game will talk to a Maker 1000. It is Wi-Fi enabled. That will talk to ifttt.com, which then will trigger lights from Wemo switches and other things, like maybe we'll have a fan turn on at some point, maybe when a storm's going. We'll also have the Maker 1000 talk to relay boards that we will design and make. Those relay boards will use Wi-Fi to open up a web socket between the Maker 1000 and the board, and then we can control other things like a linear actuator to open a door. We'll also open a web socket to the Matrix Creator board. Now that one sits on top of a Raspberry Pi, so with that one we can trigger sounds in another room as well. So Connor, I'll show you these boards in detail while I'll go download all the software we need. Let's look at our lineup of devices to pull this off. First, the Maker 1000. It has all the good stuff the Arduino Uno had, plus Wi-Fi enabled. It has a tighter package and some more pin capability, too. The ESP8266. This bad boy is the cheapest way to make an IoT device. Most awesome, you can program it with the Arduino IDE. It has a few pins that you can control. With some transistors and relays, you can make anything happen. Last, we have what we consider the boss of Maker boards, the Matrix Creator. It has just about everything. It can sense all positions, has a mic array that can sense sound direction, it talks to Zigbee, 
has an IR, and it even has a cool Everloop and an FPGA. Since it sits on top of a Raspberry Pi, you can code it with Python, JavaScript, C++, and just about any other language of choice. We'll never outgrow this one when it comes to our projects. We'll also make pretty good use of these Wemo switches. So let me show you how to get Unity, the game engine, to talk to your IoT devices. So let's first download Unity. It's unity3d.com, and it's a nice free software. Get the personal free edition. Got to accept the terms. Primarily, you can't have made 100,000 on one of your games made with the engine and use the free version. They want to help you get started in your career, but uh, after that, they want a piece of the action. We're going to name it Sunlight Sleepwalker. So the first thing we got to do is change the player settings to use the entire .NET platform at our disposal. Without that, you will not be able to use your COM ports. It starts out with a subset, so you need to switch this to .NET 2.0. That's the number one tip there. You won't be able to pull this one off. So when you look at the screen, you always have a light source and a camera. I'm going to go ahead and make a little simple script and attach it to the main light source in the scene. Just name that script 4D Game Engine. And now double click on it. Visual Studio will open up gives you some default code but we're gonna add the system IO ports that way we can access all those objects and name a object SP for serial port and for now I'm just gonna put a little timer in here I'm doing this all in the start function and that only executes once when it's scene first opens after that the update function goes very much like Arduino does with its setup and loop so the first thing I have to do here is I'm having to loop through. It's skipping COM1 because uh, most likely that's my mouse. I'm just going to have it pick up the next COM port that's available. And I'll have it open up that COM port and then print out to the Maker 1000. But now let's program the Arduino side of this to catch that serial. Okay, I'm going to use their web-enabled editor. This thing's awesome because it just has all the libraries in it. You don't have to manage that anymore, so it works very well. It also has a sketchbook that saves up in the cloud. Okay, we're going to go 9600 baud rate. Set that LED to low at first. So if we have any serial available in the buffer, we're going to read it in. I'm going to compare it against ASCII 0. So that's all I'm doing there is I'm taking an ASCII va value, subtracting that in byte off, comparing it to zero just for readability of the code. All right, so now I've just pasted in, copied and pasted over, and altered the code to tell it to blink the number of times based on the number that's sent over from our 3D game. And about every half second, it'll, it'll loop around through. And, and so that's all we're doing. We're just going to do this so we can compile it and now run it to see if our 3D game will talk to it. So now I'm running it, and it is going. You see it's counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's actually counting kind of fast. Let me go check back here in the code. Oh, got my braces in the wrong spot. It happens. There we go. Now we got a nice every couple of seconds. It's shooting out a 0, then a 1, then a 2, then a 3, and it'll just keep looping and looping. Well, that enough with the programming already. Max, cue the indie game montage. It all comes together with Unity, about 2,500 lines of C-sharp code to handle all user input and the artificial intelligence. Can anyone take a guess at what these green capsules are for? If you have any questions on 3D game coding, you can connect with us at the link in the description to Element 14. Now let's design our circuits. I use Autodesk Eagle to capture all my circuits. We're building the personal library of useful circuit blocks, so with every project we get more and more efficient. We first lay out the schematic. Now the physical board itself. And finally we export it to Autodesk Fusion, that way we can design a case around it. 
just uploaded a test script to test the motor controller. Working good. The whole rig just draws about half an amp with those little motors. We made six total circuit boards based on three needs. An IoT motor driver, an IoT high power relay, and an IoT photocoupled relay. Okay, here's one of the first ones I made. It is intended to work with any 3.3 regulated microcontroller. So this is actually a power out. Five volts comes in here, which powers our L293D chip. This is the chip that will drive the motors bidirectionally. Here is the inputs. It takes four inputs to drive two motors forward or reverse. And this goes out to the motors. This one is a high power relay ready for an ESP8266. So this could be a nine volt supply, knocked down to 3.3 volts here, but then that nine volts can be switched in to turn on this relay. So you see a uh, current limiting resistor that's gonna trigger this transistor, that's gonna hit the relay, and then that relay allows us to have up to uh, 10 amps on DC, 28 volts DC. This is the photo coupled uh, a photocoupled version. Uh, the intent is that you have 5 volts or 3.3 volts coming in from a totally independent circuit. By totally independent I mean we have this photocoupler in between the sides of the circuit so you can have higher power like 9 volts or 12 volts coming in here and that will power a device connected to here. The uh, photocoupler, the way it works is there's, it's not electrically connected. There's actually an IR light in here that is turned on when this goes high. Current limiting resistor, just like you would for any LED. Well, that light then hits a phototransistor, which switches to hit this transistor, which can take a little more current draw through it, up to 0.8 amps. Basically be a solid state switch to turn on LEDs. This is the one of the better ones. You could tell I started perfecting these as I got through much neater lines. Again, this is an ESP8266 board. This whole thing costs about six bucks, but it pretty much does the same thing that a Wemo switch would do, but it's DC powered. So this could actually switch on an AC appliance if we wanted it to, or it can do a DC drive, you know, heavier motors, things that take up to 10 amps. We will put a nine volt on this. Uh, the regulator here knocks it down to 3.3 volts. Because there's an issue with when you, when you plug these in and first power them up, they have to be pulled high here. They can't go, be pulled low on the GPIO or they'll go into the bootloader mode. That was very confusing for me. So in the end, I ended up having to use a P MOSFET that then allowed me to transistor in this relay. So now it definitely just comes up. So let's give this one a try. And you should be able to hear it clicking and see the LED light up. I just have a little blink program running on it, but we can actually put a web server or a socket web socket server on here so it'll receive uh, commands from the Maker 1000 or any other Internet of Things device. And for the mother of all circuits that we made, this is another motor driver. You got your two motor outputs here. So it's bi-directional, two motors. This one will allow voltages all the way up to about 18 volts. The, really the limiting factor is this regulator here, which takes it down to five volts for the L293D to function. But the source power goes to this pin here. So it's actually passing that on to the motor driver. So in our case, we're gonna have a 12 volt source or 11.1 volt LiPo battery source that's powering motors. So we'll get a good one amp on each motor to do some fancy things. This has a variable regulator on it, so we can tune it down to 3.3 or five volts. In our case, we're gonna power the Raspberry Pi and Matrix Creator board with it. And those will provide signals back, 3.3 volt signals back to command the motor driver there. To start, when Sleepwalker enters the Maker mode, it will fire a zero over to the Maker 1000. That in turn will send a WebSocket command to play an MP3 file on the Matrix. And here we have the lightning section. Anytime a tube comes over, the Maker 1000 will do a little routine that simulates lightning. It's a horse. But who was pulling it? Mom? Oh no, he 
these up. It does that by taking the pin high, and then 200 milliseconds later, taking it back low, doing a little pause, going back high, and then back and forth. A little bit of a long streak of lightning there right at the end. Here we have the door being beat on. This is going to turn a drill on under a seat. So with that one, we'll go WebSocket Command. It won't matter which one because that's going to have a dedicated device. So we'll give that IP address 102 and we'll program one of our circuits to simply turn on and do that. Here we have the door opening, so we'll do that with uh, another uh, circuit. We'll set that to 100. Now we have where lights turn on through IFTTT, so let's take a look at that. And what I'll do right now, i got our, our Christmas lights plugged into one. So we'll just fire up the Christmas lights. I type in a nine. Nope, that's an, that's an eight. Now we type the nine and it will turn that light back off. Now we'll 3D print some enclosures real quick. They're just a box with some holes cut out on the sides to let the wires go through. You can go to element 14 to get my final code and all the schematics. While we were messing around, we thought of a funny gag we can do. First, we gotta get this installed up in the home theater room. It's great that we have the Eagle design blocks and the IoT code, but there is one problem. With the countless hours of video editing, I have become pretty immune to jump scares, so we're going to test this out on my cousin Sammy. Was that his door? How can we lead him back in? I can't move it or it's going to wake him up, so we're just going to sit here. Oh, the couch! <laughs> oh, that's scary! Ah, oh, no! Did the chair just move? Oh, I gotta go down there and it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, Connor, we did what we set out to do. We made a lot of Eagle design blocks, and we also made a heck of a lot of IoT code. Do you have your own library of Eagle design blocks? If so, check us out on element14.com presents. See you next time. Who plugged this in? Clark Griswold? I'm talking now. Yeah, I'm talking also. I'm talking too. I'm talking deeper. I'm talking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking deeper. I ain't sure about that old man. <laughs>